Hello, my name is Brett Elliker. I'm from the University of California, San Francisco. My topic today is mosaic attenuation. I have no disclosures. And one small thing before we start, I'm going to be using QR codes for the references in this talk. For those of you who are not familiar with QR codes, what you do is you hold your phone up to the screen with the camera on. It should sense the QR code and then it should link to the site in PubMed, which is the reference article, if you want to look at the article yourself. So let's start with terminology. Mosaic attenuation refers to heterogeneous lung density with two densities of lung, either opaque or lucent. And the first question when you're dealing with cases of mosaic attenuation is which lung is abnormal? If the more opaque lung is abnormal, we describe that as ground glass opacity. If the more lucent lung is abnormal, we describe that as mosaic perfusion. Now, I know that there's some controversy in the use of the term mosaic perfusion. We do use this term at UCSF, and it represents geographic areas of lucent lung. If you don't like that term and you have a preferable term, pretend like you're training your dictation system. And every time I say that, it spits out whatever term you prefer. Uh, but I will be using that term. And this is most commonly seen with airways disease, less commonly with vascular diseases. And what this does represent is decreased perfusion, regardless of etiology. In the case of airways disease, the perfusion is decreased because of hypoxia and reflex vasoconstriction. In the case of vascular disease, it's reduced perfusion because of direct stenosis or occlusion of the vessels. Ground glass opacity, on the other hand, opaque lung abnormal, represents changes below the resolution of CT, and in that sense is one of the most nonspecific chest CT findings that we're going to see. It can be alveolar, interstitial, or a mix of the two, and the differential diagnosis is primarily based on symptom duration, either acute or chronic, the distribution of the lungs, and any associated findings. So how good are we at making this distinction between ground glass, often representing infiltrative disease, and mosaic perfusion representing either airways or vascular disease. And it turns out our ability to predict what type of disease is present is quite good when it comes to infiltrative and airways disease, but is quite bad when it comes to vascular disease. So this, these statistics give you a sense of the ability of radiologists to predict what type of disease is present. So how do we make this distinction between mosaic perfusion, lucent lung abnormal, and ground glass opacity? And here are some features that are all gonna favor mosaic perfusion. None of these are perfect. And you'll see exceptions to these rules, but these are the rules and they're pretty good, although not perfect. In many cases, there is a relatively mild difference in attenuation between the opaque and lucent, and the lucent areas are very sharply demarcated from the more opaque areas. You can draw with a pencil the lines between the two. Sometimes you have smaller vessels in the abnormally lucent lung and bigger vessels in the more normal opaque lung. If that's present, that finding, that's helpful, but many cases of particularly airways disease, the vessel size is the same. So that is helpful when it's present, when it's absent, it's not helpful. When mosaic perfusion is due to airways disease, you would expect to see air trapping on expiratory CT in the same places that are lucent on the inspiratory CT. And then associated findings can be very helpful in predicting mosaic perfusion. We can see findings of airways disease, such as tree and bud opacities or central lobular nodules or airway thickening, or signs of pulmonary vascular disease, particularly pulmonary hypertension. So a big pulmonary artery, big right ventricle. So here are some examples of mosaic perfusion. In this case, it's relatively mild to moderate in severity. We see these nice, very sharply demarcated areas of lucent lung with discrete sharp borders. When you put on narrow windows, it really accentuates the difference between the two densities of lung, and these are really helpful in improving your ability to detect the presence of mosaic perfusion. Here's another example. Both of these examples are due to bronchitis obliterans from two different etiologies. The second one is in lung transplant rejection, very sharp borders between the opaque and the lucent. And then one final example of vascular disease, again, with a very sharp border between the more normal central lung and the more abnormal diseased peripheral lung. Vessel size differential, again, is helpful when you see it if it's not helpful when it's not present. So basically in these two cases, we see much bigger vessels in the more normal 
opaque lung, and we see much smaller vessels in the more in the abnormally lucent lung. So that difference in uh, size of the vessel really helps us predict that the lucent lung is going to be abnormal, and the pattern is mosaic perfusion. When mosaic perfusion is from airways disease, we'd expect to see air trapping on expiratory CT in the same areas that were lucent on the inspiratory CT. A few statistics about expiratory CT and its use. About 20% of patients with air trapping will have a normal inspiratory CT, so this can significantly increase your diagnostic yield for detecting abnormality. The diagnostic accuracy when using expiratory CT increases from about 80 to 90 percent. And the most common diagnoses that show you isolated air trapping as the only abnormality include chronic bronchitis, asthma, and constrictor bronchiolitis. The presence of associated findings can be really helpful in predicting that mosaic perfusion is present. So in this patient with cystic fibrosis, there is airways inflammation and bronchiectasis that's predominantly located in the lucent lung regions that suggests that the lucent lung is abnormal. The same with pulmonary vascular diseases. So this patient presented with pulmonary hypertension, had an enlarged pulmonary artery, and in this case, the heterogeneous lung attenuation represents mosaic perfusion as the abnormal lung. And then lastly, mosaic perfusion can be seen with a wide variety of different findings, and those other findings may be helpful in terms of differential diagnosis. This patient actually has both mosaic perfusion and ground glass opacity, as evidenced by the fact that there are three attenuations of lung, two lucent, two opaque, and relatively normal intermediate attenuation lung. This combination of three densities of lung, two lucent, two opaque, and relatively normal, has been described in several ways, but probably the most uh, graphic is the head cheese sign. Head cheese is a meat um, that's sliced up and has a very similar appearance to the CT that we're showing here. There's a differential diagnosis, but the vast majority of cases are hypersensitivity pneumonitis. And here's an example of actual head cheese just to compare the, to the CT scan. Now, I've shown you a bunch of cases of mosaic perfusion. This is an example of ground glass opacity, which demonstrates the opposite findings. There's usually a fairly significant difference in attenuation between the abnormally opaque lung and the more normal Loose, more lucent lung. The margins at the edges of these tend to be ill-defined. The vessels are not bigger or smaller in any areas of lung. And if the patient has expiratory CTs, there should be no air trapping in any lung regions. This is an example of pneumocystis infection. As I said, none of these rules are perfect, and there are some significant challenges in this interpretation. First, Sometimes ground glass is very geographic. This is probably most commonly seen with viral infections where you get very localized areas of lung injury. And there's a very sharp demarcation between, in these cases, the abnormally opaque lung, representing ground glass opacity, and the relatively normal lung. So these cases can be more difficult because that geographic nature is more typical of mosaic perfusion. But in these cases, the difference in attenuation between the opaque and the loosen is usually quite marked, which is not usually, although occasionally, is seen with mosaic perfusion. Mosaic perfusion is arguably easiest to interpret and evaluate when it's moderate in severity. And we see heterogeneous lung attenuation with lobular areas of lucent lung from small airways obstruction. As it gets more severe, it gets more challenging. This is a patient with terrible pulmonary function tests and very bad symptoms. Uh, and we originally thought this was ground glass with the more opaque lung being abnormal, but then it was stable for six months. And it turns out this is extensive mosaic perfusion with the more central lung being normal. And all that blood that used to go to the areas that were more lucent are now being redistributed to that more central lung. And it accentuates the density difference between the normally opaque lung and the more lucent lung, which is the diseased lung. And then when this becomes very severe. It's no longer mosaic perfusion because the entire lung is too lucent. This patient had horrible pulmonary function tests, very severe obstruction because the airways obstruction is involving lungs diffusely. And so since there's no normal lung with which to compare, this can be very difficult to detect.
Now let's talk a little bit about mosaic perfusion and differential diagnosis. Airways diseases in general affect the structures at the middle of the pulmonary lobule, and they may affect those structures in different ways. There are classification schemes for small airways disease, many of which include nodules in the classification. The one category I really want to focus on is the airways diseases that produce focal lung lucency, because these are the ones that are most pertinent to our differential diagnosis when it comes to mosaic perfusion. So our differential diagnosis of isolated mosaic perfusion when there are not significant other findings includes these etiologies. And this is a paper looking at the most common causes of isolated mosaic perfusion. This is going to vary depending upon practice patterns and referrals and things like that. But the one thing I would like to point out is that constrictor bronchiolitis, which probably accounts for a significant percentage of many of these cases, and those are highlighted in red, that accounts for a significant percentage of patients with isolated mosaic perfusion. Now, in terms of the main differential diagnosis for isolated mosaic perfusion, these are the three etiologies we usually talk about. Asthma, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, and constrictor bronchiolitis. And again, this one, constrictor bronchiolitis, encompasses a fairly high percentage of patients. So let's talk a little bit about what that is, what that means. Constrictor bronchiolitis goes by several names. Uh, synonyms include bronchitis obliterans or obliterative bronchiolitis. It is a histologic pattern. As with many things in chest CT, we borrow terminology from histology. Where, and on histology, you get peribronchiolar fibrosis, a scar tissue forming around small airways. And otherwise, the lung is very normal. So actually, this is a pattern that may be difficult to see even on histology because it's quite subtle. The scarring around the airways may be quite subtle. The main causes are post-viral, connective tissue disease, drugs, other toxic inhalations like gases, like chlorine gas, graft-versus-host disease, chronic rejection, and lung transplant. And the treatment tends to be azithromycin, inhaled corticosteroids, and this Montelukast. This treatment may be effective if it's caught really early in the process, but often this is an uh, irreversible fibrosis, so often the treatment is not super effective. And the spectrum of constrictor bronchiolitis goes from isolated air trapping as the only abnormality. These are the mildest manifestations of constrictor bronchiolitis. But severe constrictor bronchiolitis that has been present for many years can eventually produce extensive large airways disease with cystic bronchiectasis and airways inflammation. So these two cases just show the full spectrum of constrictor bronchiolitis from most mild to most severe. We have focused on... Small airways disease is a manifestation of mosaic perfusion, and that is the most common cause. However, vascular diseases also can cause mosaic perfusion. They tend to look somewhat different. Airways diseases are more patchy and lobular, whereas vascular diseases are non-lobular, often larger swaths of lung, often peripheral. In terms of differential diagnosis, this is often seen in patients with pulmonary hypertension, and vascular causes of pulmonary hypertension are the most common causes of mosaic perfusion. And those include chronic thromboembolic disease, idiopathic pH, venoocclusive disease, fibrosing mediastinitis, and amongst others. So in summary, mosaic attenuation can be due to one of two things, ground glass opacity, opaque lung abnormal, or mosaic perfusion, lucent lung abnormal. And the typical features that are going to suggest that mosaic perfusion is the predominant abnormality includes the very geographic nature of the lucent lung with very sharp borders, smaller vessels in the lucent lung, bigger vessels in the more opaque lung, and when due to airways disease, you would expect to see air trapping on expiratory CT in the same places that are lucent on the inspiratory CT. Of course, there are significant challenges in making the distinction between ground glass opacity and mosaic perfusion. Occasionally, ground glass will be very geographic, particularly with viral infection, and as mosaic perfusion becomes more extensive, there's an greater difference between the more normal opaque lung and the abnormally lucent lung. And that can make it you think that you're dealing with ground glass. When mosaic perfusion is diffuse, there's no normal lung with which to compare, and that's even more challenging. Remember the differential diagnosis. When mosaic perfusion is associated with other findings, you focus on those other findings. When it's seen in isolation, the main differential diagnosis is asthma, uh, constrictor bronchiolitis, and hypersensitivity pneumonitis and vascular diseases such as chronic thromboembolic disease. Remember this entity constricted bronchiolitis because it is one of the most common causes of mosaic perfusion and there's a variety of different 
cause of this, and there's a very large spectrum in how this can appear. Thanks for your attention.